Hey, it's me, Bob, and I'm here to give you another Glide tutorial. This one's going to be all about filtering. Now, Glide does offer some native ways to filter an inline list. This one's going to be about how to create your own custom filters. So for this filtering, we're not going to be leveraging the in-app filter. Um, as you know, you can leverage an in-app filter for an inline list by choosing a column, and that lets your users select what type of filtering they'd like for that specific component. Okay. But you're limited to only one column as part of that filter. What if you want to filter where you have the name, the gender, and the age to be filters for this inline list? You have to create your own. Let's get a little bit creative, and here's how we do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch our view. We're going to get rid of our list style and move it to a detail style. Next, once you have a clear component list here, you might have to delete all the things that are kind of in there by default. Don't worry, it's not going to delete any of your data. It just deletes the co uh, components that show that data. Then we're going to add in an inline list. And this inline list is going to be um, our students sheet as well. So we are going to just replicate what it would have been if we had chosen a list style. Get rid of this title because we already have a title as part of the tab and let's add in some information so for the image we're going to add in the student image here and then just to show you that our filters are working let's go ahead and add in those values to which we're going to filter so title let's give this the name for details let's give this the gender and then for caption let's choose the age because i want to let our users select the gender and the age as filters in order to display that type of list. Now I found the best way to filter is by leveraging a choice component. So I'm going to add in a choice component here and let's start with gender. So our sheet will be the student sheet, values will be the gender column. This way that when the user selects the drop down they're only going to see the genders that are available as part of the sheet. And the column we're going to write to a new column called gender selection. We haven't created it yet. Let's take a pause and do that now. So I'm going to go to the data editor here. I'm going to add in a column to our student sheet. And let's call this gender selection. And this is going to be a text column because it's going to accept either male or female. And we want this to be a user specific column. That way, when I choose a filter, it doesn't choose that filter for somebody else using the app. I'll hit done. And let's create, while we're here, our age filter as well. So we'll call this age selection. And this will be a number column. So basic column number, and then user specific with precision one. Done. All right, so now our choice component, we can wrap up here. So instead of data column student last, we'll choose our gender selection. All right, and then I'm going to bring that choice component to the top, and now you see that they can choose either female or male as part of the dropdown. Now, if your choices are uh, anywhere between one and five values, I highly recommend using the segmented version. So then that way it's one less click for your users, and it looks more like a filter as well. If you're trying to conserve space, you can also delete the title as long as the choices that are available to you are obvious as to what you're trying to filter by. Okay. Now, right now, this doesn't do anything, right? But we can see that when I select female back in our data editor, my user specific column now says female. All right, let's create a second one for our age. So I'll come back to our components list and clone our choice component at the top. But now we'll uh, set this up to be the age. So students values age, and the column will be the age selection. There we go. So now when I choose female and 13, I now have the ability to see that I have female and 13. Now, in order to make these comparisons happen for filtering, we need to be able to populate these two values down the rows to make those comparisons. So to do that, we're going to create two single value columns. So I'm going to hit add column. And let's call this gender single. And for column type, we'll call single value. We're going to get the first value from students and then the gender selection. And so what that does, it takes this one cell and it populates it all the way down. We'll do the same thing for our age. So we'll add a column. We'll call this age single. Column type will be a single value column. We get the first from students and age selection.
There we go. So now we have female and 13, and now all we have to do is compare these two values to the actual values of the row. So I'm going to hit add column. We're going to create two new columns, one for if, it's going to be, well, both are going to be if then else's. And let's call this first one if gender. And what we want is if the gender of the student is that single value gender, then true. There we go. Now we also want true to happen when they haven't selected anything yet, because if they haven't selected anything from the inline list, uh, then we want to display everybody. So we'll hit add case, where if gender selection is empty, then true. Done. Uh, let's see. Not gender selection. My apologies. If the single value gender is empty. If gender single is empty, then true. Okay. So uh, we see that this first row, second row, and the second to last row had the values true, which means those values should be our girls. And we see that Malin, Isla, and Zoe are indeed have female for the gender. And if I choose nobody, then we sh they should all be true because I haven't selected anything yet. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the age. We'll call this if age. This will be an if then else. And we're gonna choose if the age equals and that single value age, then true. And also, if the single age, age single, is empty, then true. All right, so anyone who's 13 should now have value of true, which would be this person, this person, this person, this person, and this person. Let's just indeed find that out. 13, 13, 13, 13, and 13, perfect. All right, the last thing we have to do is just apply those filters now to that inline list. So back in our layout view, I'm going to go to the inline list component, features, filter, and we're going to set those two filters where if gender is true and, so I have an and, the if gender, oh, if age is true. And that should take care of it. All right. So here, this is the only 13-year-old female. We also have 14-year-old females and then all females. We have 13-year-old males, 14-year-old males, and all males. Here we have all 14-year-olds, all 13-year-olds, all females, and all males. All right. So here you can create an infinite amount of uh, choice components, add those single value, or that combination of the user specific with the single value with the if then else, and then apply that if then else column as a filter to the inline list. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at robert.petito at and as always, thanks for watching.